Good morning, friends. Welcome to Bio News. I have eight papers to report to you today. Uh, to begin, a paper by Zeng et al. And by the way, you'll notice that in general, there are a tremendous amount of academic papers being released by, Ch by Chinese uh, researchers. Really incredible. Uh, there used to be a time when American researchers used to produce the majority of research. In fact, it was still the case when I was an undergrad, but it seems not to be the case anymore. Anyway, Zeng et al. produced a study on berberine. Um, it seems to be a rodent model. Berberine was shown to increase the activity of what's called the uh, uh, sirtuin deacetylase 1, also called SIRT1. Um, this is a histone deacetylase that was made famous by David Sinclair, the longevity researcher and um, profound academic at, at Harvard. Anyway, berberine was shown to increase a SIRT1 expression and in turn increasing the expression of a new transcription factor, a newly discovered transcription factor called transcription factor e, uh, EB. Um, a paper by a South Indian name that seems Tamil that I don't think I can pronounce, but I will try. Siva Subra Maniam. Siva Subra Maniam. Anyway, um, in this paper, uh, it was a genetically modified mouse model. What they showed was that reducing IGF-1 in the liver of female mice, but not male mice, improved or lessened the rate of atherosclerotic development. Now that's very interesting because there's also polymorphisms that are known in humans to in extend the life of females when they reduce IGF-1, but not males which doesn't really make that much sense to me. And uh, unfortunately, I'm one of those people that carry that the IGF-1 polymorphism. And I'm a man, and my wife doesn't carry it. She has the full IGF-1 receptor functioning gene of that SNP, and she could benefit from it. And in this case, it's thought to be because the reduction in IGF-1 in, uh, IGF in, the, in the female rodent's uh, livers reduces the uh, expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-6, which is also called IL-6. Uh, a paper by Fung et al. Really interesting. Can't wait to read it. Never even heard about this topic before. Apparently, striatal dopamine, dopamine in the brain, in a particular place of the brain, is very much associated with not just reward, the, the sensation of reward, and habituation, and addiction, and all of that stuff, but also the perception of time, which I really find shocking because... Okay, let me tell you guys a little personal story. So my wife... Um, is extremely good at remembering where she was geographically. She's very good at finding her way out of places. Often something weird, um, surprisingly that men uh, are good at. I, on the other hand, can't figure my way out of a maze for the life of me, but I can record time as if I have a watch on me. Like I know if four minutes go by or if 10 minutes go by, I can almost always tell the time of the day and it's not because of the sun. I like have a record in the back of my mind. Now, I, people have always been surprised by this with me. So I was surprised to find out that it's associated with dopamine. And maybe because I have naturally low dopamine levels. So my brain is always sensing. So it knows exactly what's going on. Who knows? I'm, I'm making a joke. But anyway, uh, Papa Margaritis et al. This is a review paper. Now, I usually won't cover review papers with you guys. What is a review paper? It's what's called in academia a descriptive paper. Who writes descriptive papers? People who can't discover things. They go summarize things, like myself. I don't work in a lab, I can't discover things. So if you go to my blog, well, sometimes you'll see notes with just citations, but you'll see sometimes I write articles and these articles could be published, like the erythropoietic one, could be published in an academic journal, but it provides no new information. It just summarizes all the stuff. Well, there's one of those papers. I usually won't cover those for you, but this one's really interesting. So this paper is about bariatric surgery. What does that mean? That's the kind of surgery you see in uh, 600 pound life when they cut people's stomachs, they either put a, a sheath on it or they cut a piece of it out. In those surgeries, it turns out that what are called gut hormones and gut peptides, the expression of those peptides r changes after bariatric surgery in a way that not only should reduce hunger and improve weight loss, but also when it doesn't um, uh, change that much, that's more common with people who don't have successful bariatric uh, surgery weight loss. So the gut hormones in particular we're talking about are ghrelin. It decreases ghrelin. It uh, increases the expression of GLP-1, which is something that Vigor Steve was talking about. He was using a GLP-1 agonist to um, attenuate his hunger. And it increases the expression of a peptide called PYY, which promotes satiety also, like GLP-1. 
Interesting paper. A paper by So et al. And this is very relevant to me. I'm currently uh, speaking to you right now on 20 milligrams of donapazil. Don donapazil is an acetylcholesterase inhibitor that goes way beyond ginkgo biloba and all that other kind of stuff. It is given to people with Alzheimer's disease to limit their memory dysfunction. I have had a severely bad memory from childhood, almost disturbingly bad. Like my friends always throughout childhood would get shocked. I don't remember anything. So um, it's actually been shown there is not in Alzheimer's disease, but there is some evidence to think that acetylcholesterase inhibitors can actually prevent the degradation of the hippocampus and of memory centers in the brain. So I take it quite seriously. I take 20 milligrams a day, which is the max dose. This paper shows that people taking donapazil in China have three times the likelihood of QT interval prolongation, which is something that affects your heart rhythm. This is a problem for me because I'm also on an SSRI, which I just got back on a couple of months ago. It still hasn't kicked in, unfortunately, which is why you guys can notice I'm a little more hostile and aggressive than I used to be. Um, of course, serotonin, increasing serotonin levels in the body directly reduce aggression in all people. That's just the case of, of uh, in, all, in all mammals, in fact, just not in invertebrates. In invertebrates, it does the opposite which is one of the mistakes in uh, Jordan Peterson's book, actually. When Jordan Peterson, unfortunately, describes lobsters having higher serotonin levels as being more aggressive and then implies that's the case for humans also, but he doesn't know that, uh, it's just a mistake, but he didn't know that um, mammals do the, have the opposite effect. Um, anyway, uh, another paper, not, not to say anything bad about Jordan Peterson. I love, I love the guy. Uh, Collagen et al. So, uh, they have a paper on... Um, a hu they, they did both human and mouse models of heart of what's called heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, which is basically what not not Big Lenny has. Big Lenny does not have this. They showed that empagliflozin reduced inflammatory cytokine expression, including including tumor necrosis factor alpha, and I think IL six, yeah, IL six, and reduced oxidative stress in both the cardiomyocyte cytosols as well as in the mitochondria of the heart. So apparently empagliflozin, again, the anti-diabetic drug that I'm on myself, a relative of which Fuad Abiyad is on, a lot of us are getting on this drug now, um, it does reduce oxidative stress in the body also, uh, likely by its uh, modulation of, uh, of uh, glucose in the body, of course. Uh, Zhang et al. had a paper, which I, I really wanted to talk to you guys about because I wanted to give it as an example for some of those people that I know, I know there's a little bit of a different issue with the fructose versus glucose example, but I just want to show you guys how papers can be taken out of context. So there's a paper by Zhang et al. again. Now this is Zhang, not Zhang. So another Chinese group. But in this one, they show that... So this is what they do. They give a rodents a high fructose uh, meal, both after and before they tried both. Both worked. Uh, Tylenol or acetaminophen poisoning. I think Tylenol is acetaminophen, whatever it is, acetaminophen poisoning, that reg this is the most common cause of liver uh, failure in the world. So they poison the mice, but they give them fructose. And when they give them fructose, the mice are protected from the poisoning somewhat. And how are they protected? By a modulation of the fructose on an axis in the liver called the uh, carbohydrate response binding protein. Okay, that's one, uh, the carbohydrate response binding protein alpha, that's one part, and the fibroblast growth factor 21, that axis. So they're also called CHREBP and uh, FGF21. The interesting thing is this, CHREBP is a binding protein that is upregulated the most in carbohydrate heavy diets, and then downregulated in ketogenic diets, and almost absent in starvation. The fibroblast growth factor is the opposite. It turns on in starvation and it also extends lives in rodents. So what happens here is basically that the carbohydrate effect, because uh, the, by the way, the carbohydrate response binding element alpha was discovered mainly because of fructose, because there are some digestion mechanisms of, of uh, sugars in the body that don't involve insulin. And this is one of the ones discovered, I think, in 2001, it was discovered, actually. When that's involved, what happens is that IGF-1 upregulates in the liver and growth factors in general, as we'll come to know in this series, and I want you guys to always know this, growth factors in the body not only grow new cells and cause hyperplasia, which means cell division, but they also cause like normal old cells and even damaged cells to resist uh, cell death 
from, for example, inflammatory cytokines, like your immune system attacking them and so on. So if you have upregulated brain growth factors, you not just grow new, new brain cells, but you don't lose brain cells as quickly, which is again how, like, for example, you can be protected from methamphetamine with something that increases uh, mTOR in the brain. In this case, you can be protected from acetaminophen poisoning by increasing growth factors in the liver temporarily by fruct with the use of fructose. Uh, but as compared to no fructose, not as compared to glucose, right? So that's how you can be tricked by studies. I just wanted to show you guys that. It's not that fructose is good. It's that you're developing growth factors in your liver. You could get those so many other ways. You don't need fructose. Um, I mean, yeah, anyway. So the next paper is, <laughs> sorry guys, I get, I don't know if I should talk a lot on these. I'm just getting used to the series. So I don't know if they're gonna be long or short. Hopefully they'll be short. I, I'm sorry for being long-winded. Um, uh, the next paper is by Arienti et al. In this paper, they showed that in vitro, what does in vitro mean? It means in a petri dish, not in the real life example. They took what are called human glioblastoma cells, which are a kind of brain cancer cell. And they put them in basically a hyperbaric oxygen environment. And those cells became sensitized not only to radiotherapy, but they themselves um, uh, downregulated, for example, hypoxia inducible factor alpha expression, which would uh, grow the cells and um, and inhibits cell prol proliferation as well. So you guys may have heard of hyperbaric oxygen chambers. I talked about that with uh, Dave actually. It's not the case that hyperbaric oxygen chambers kill all cancer cells, it's quite the opposite. There are some cancers that will grow rapidly in that environment. Um, the issue there being of course oxidative stress. Oxidative stress from the oxygen can kill some cells, but it can cause the body to react a different way. Cancers are not all created equal, and that's why I know nothing about cancer. Although I'm hoping to read more about it. I just bought an excellent book. Maybe I'll show you guys on the next Bio News. Have a great day, brothers. We'll see you soon.